It's Rare Whiskey Friday. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. We're not going to do the thing. Because here's the thing. Because it was your turn. Shepard. Fucking Shepard. Thought it'd be funny to send in a ton of bullshit Canadian sourced Canadian. Almost all American companies sourcing Canadian. Right. In a whole box dedicated to it. Right. And I don't want to spend four of this day and then one day on this one and the next week and a half drinking Canadian whiskey. Right. So we're going to do it all. Oh, okay. So right now. Really quick. And I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, butthurt that I'm going to have to do like, you know, what's about to happen. But in terms of the lulls, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to respect the game. Yeah. That is pretty funny. <laughs> we are going to drink these and we're going to split them up so that neither of us has to go through all of them. That's fair. And we're going to drink them the way God intended. But hold on. Hold on. Is it, are, you just completely skipped over the intro, mm -hmm. the disclaimer, Ray Whiskey Friday, these are necessarily large brands. Is, these is are that, all is that easily accessible. Is it? Oh, they're easily accessible. Oh, these are easily accessible. An average of $10 a bottle. Well, our people, should they be, hold on, should we give each and every one its own episode? No. So people can find them no. who are looking for input. Oh, no. And no. <laughs> a review. No. I think, D Daniel, if they're easily findable, no. they deserve. No. Why would you not give the people no. something that would help them make a decision whenever they're trying to find the right whiskey for them? You start. Wow, this is plastic. I'm gonna, I'll start with Canadian Mist. Oh, wait, have we not done Canadian Mist? I, I don't remember, but it's in here hold again. Hold on, hold on, wait. Canadian Mist, we have to do its own Canadian Mist episode. I can't even open this. No, we can't. we're not doing its own Canadian Dude. Mist episode. <laughs> we've no, done, we've hold done, on, we've look. done how many, like just white labeled MGPs? No, we do, we've done Canadian And then Canadian Mist, we all no, give Canadian see. Mist its own episode. I reserve the right to circle back. I think this and should give be Canadian a, Mist its own episode. I think this should be a tribe no, episode. No, an entire tribe episode dedicated. All right, to Canadian Mist. So, <laughs> I'm. Oh God, I'm. You don't even want. You don't even want to sully a glass with the Canadian Mist. You go straight for the plastic bottle. Hold on, I, ah. I hold on. We have to do our job. That's ethanol. We have to do our job. For, okay. So before we move on too far, I am surprisingly open to us doing a whiskey tribe episode about what is everybody's experience with Canadian mist. There could be people who love Canadian mist. I'm thinking of my alcoholic aunt. Should we for do instance. a Should we do a man on the street episode? I don't have an. We're on like have a microphone on the street. What do you like, Canadian? And we mist? approach people with a bottle of Canadian mist. And this look, this is another reason. Like we don't even have the proper accoutrement to <laughs> to experience and review the Canadian mist the way it was intended to be experienced and reviewed. In at a least paper, on at in a least, paper bag. In a paper bag. At least on ice. Probably in a soda. Most likely in a generic name brand soda. This is the closest <laughs> we're gonna get. <laughs> oh, it's, it's coconut, plastic, and oh. Just, would you just like, you just like slobber on it? No, that's now? not slobber, that's just whiskey spilling through this it's, horse it's spout. slobber. <laughs> you know what, this is what I'm gonna do. Ready? Because you, you can <laughs> oh, squeeze Jesus. it so much. <laughs> You're definitely gonna smell like an alcoholic Hold on. at the end of this episode. Yeah. Well, so this is my very brave new tasting technique, but I do need to be driving, so I'm consuming very little. Uh, my driver's license has been expired for two years. Car registration, uh, six years. A whole new record. Oh yeah, it's a new record, like yeah. by far. I crushed my old record of expiration on that. So if I do get pulled over, smelling like Canadian mist, expired driver's license, very expired car registration. Yeah, basically your car looks like you live in it. Yeah. So you're gonna be homeless drunk. They won't let you get back in the car and drive away. No, absolutely. That's where I'm taking a ride to uh, the station. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes you are. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> it aerosol. Oh my God, I'm so excited, it's gonna be that much. It didn't even. Oh my God, it's gonna be 
<laughs> it was all froth. I was just gonna go. I was gonna be like a big slurpy thing, and then I was gonna grab it. Oh no. wait, I got some. Ooh. Oh. Right. Wow. That's. Oh, it's bad. It's in my hair. Can yeah, it is. Canadian LTD. <laughs> Tastes basically the same. Oh no, it's flavored. This actually tastes like coconut. <laughs> if we haven't done, I'm saying this, if we haven't done a Canadian Mist episode in just by itself, we have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, what, what do you do with Canadian Mist? That will be the episode. It's coconuts. This is like the Malibu rum of... This is, look, these are not neat pour whiskey. These no. are cocktail whiskeys. Um, yeah. So why did you go... Canadian so Hunter. So many interesting things happening right now. I can't keep up. Why did you go full wrap the lips around the, plas oh, around the plastic bottles, but once you get the glass bottle, then no, you no, couldn't no, be I, bothered. I switched to not touching so that you could taste it after me. I was being considerate. Canadian Hunter. I don't... Are we giving adequate nosings? Uh... <laughs> well, it's very ethanol for Smells like so, ethanol. So far, all of these, very, very thin, very, very simple. Coconut and cream and ethanol and vanilla. Is... And a lot of the ethanol, like just the alcohol layer, is very recognizable. Oh, this is Idaho Gold. This is actually, if I'm not mistaken, bought by Hood River Distillers. They bought out the big brand of Idaho Gold imported Canadian whip. Yeah, yeah. It, Hood River. It tastes like, all of these so far, tastes like vodka with some like vanilla. I didn't try that one. Oh, sorry. I'll pick it back up for you. <laughs> with some uh, vanilla caramel food color. There you go. Um, I think there's a vault tour happening. There is, yeah. We're going to have to. I'll have to do some cleaning. <laughs> Um, this one looks a little fancier. This is, wait, what is Idaho? Idaho well, it's Canadian whiskey oh. imported into Idaho. Oh. But owned by an Oregon company now. Look, ma'am. At the end of the day, there's a job we have to do. No. The job... <laughs> no. No, the job of... <laughs> is, no. No. Let's appreciate, let's appreciate the exchange. <laughs> The model, people send us whiskey. Uh, Thank you for the whiskey. Shout out to you. Yeah. We review the whiskey. It's like this is. We nose it. We taste it. We don't even do, you know, the ice and you know, just pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Here's our experience with whiskey. Yeah, you know, this is what we do. We say, okay, here's a little bit of background, and here's what we smell and taste. And cheers. And I pause it to you. Hey, we got a job to do. Now. Mm mm. Mm mm. Oh, that was even worse. That one actually tastes like nail polish. This is a potter's crown. Yeah. Like, no joke, it tastes like nail polish smells if you added sugar. But, Daniel, like, take nail polish and add some Splenda. You're forgetting, though. <laughs> it's a blend of rare Canadian whiskey. It's a rare blend. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, believe me, I didn't forget. So you know when I say never ever, never go full Shepard? Mm -hmm. I think he went full Shepard. Yeah. So this one's Lord Calvert, which just makes me think of like uh, Shrek with the short. Yeah. 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 It really, right. It leaves like this weird, very weird finish, kind of like uh, bitter and clingy. Oh. What is that? It's an ethanol layer and then like a closet funk? Yeah. <sighs> is that, is that Play-Doh? Is that closet? It's, it's, it's uh, Play-Doh. It's absolutely Play-Doh. All right, Canada. So the people that get a little butthurt about, man, Canada, Canadian whiskey doesn't get any respect. Guys. I mean, no, they would argue, you, well, you this are, is what Americans are doing with it after sourcing it. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible to have a really nice Canadian whiskey. Mm -hmm. We've had several. Oh, all right, over here. I think, you know, at the risk of offense, 
I think the proportionality of like really nice Canadian whiskeys, the, the handful of those that exist versus just the budget scene with so much ethanol, so much just, you know, simple vanilla. It's like a, almost a flavored vodka type of thing. I think it does the Canadian whiskey category a disservice mm -hmm. because there's way more, you know, kind of cheap phoned in experiences coming out of Canon than there are like the really nice things. Canada absolutely is capable of producing a beautiful whiskey, but hot damn, if people don't go running for the, I didn't try. <laughs> Okay, I, I was trying. My, I, take I was my trying job. to help you out. I take my job very seriously. No. You can help me out by doing a Canadian <laughs> Mist episode if we haven't done one. <laughs> so, what I would suggest the Canadians do, because as we all know, they're a violent people. Yeah, yeah, very rage. Channel that violence towards rage. like the, the bottom tier whiskey makers who aren't putting their best foot forward into the whiskey scene. Mm -hmm. Because as long as there's like just that much off balance representation coming out of Canada, it's gonna get, it's gonna be hard to get a tremendous Look, when your primary response to anybody talking about Canadian whiskey is no, it, it can be good. Right. That's not a good starting point. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. <sighs> I only get a little bit of faint alcohol in the nose. I don't get any other food. Yeah. McNaughton. Yeah, under government supervision. Premium Canadian. That's a very, 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 very watered down yes. caramel. Now, here's it's the a very thing. Very watered down caramel, it's flat, and then you just have the ethanol. <laughs> we're gonna, <laughs> yes. We're gonna finish with this one just because I'm curious. <laughs> I thought this was, and it is, this is another piece of budget bullshit. <laughs> This is another piece of budget bullshit, right? right? But it's not plastic. Though. I started looking it up, and it's bourbon. It's not Canadian. Yeah. I started looking it up. It's American Distilling Co. We've actually talked about some of their stuff before. It's Mira Loma. But what they are saying on their website, yeah. the company is what does that read? Real quick. Concierge Gold. It's not concierge. It's concierge. They are absolutely made their name something that's really easy to mistake, say mistakenly. Is concierge a real word? <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be a real world. So here's, here's the thing. Real, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real world. Here's the thing. It's definitely a real world. Their stated purpose for these brands yeah. is premier well spirits. Oh. Right? Okay. Now we've talked about that approach so, before with Sloppy Poncho. Yeah. Premier right. well spirits. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm curious. Right what they consider to be a premier well bourbon. Okay. So, well whiskeys, these are kind of like the whiskeys that people expect to be put on the rocks, most likely mixed in a cocktail or a Coke or something. Uh, it's so when someone says, give me a bourbon and Coke, but they don't specify bourbon. Right. It's when someone says, give me a, you know, any bourbon co based cocktail, mm. but doesn't specify the bourbon, this is what goes into it. Yeah. It means that a pour spout gets put into it when it first gets opened and that pour spout stays in there forever until the bottle's empty. And okay. then a real bar will go through a couple a night. <laughs> so this is 40%. Uh, this has a pretty present nose. Yeah. But I don't know if I like the nose. No. It's dense, it's very, it's you know not thin, you don't have to hunt for it. It's ethanol caramel instead it of ethanol vanilla. Yeah. With uh, a little trace of oak threaded through that caramel. Oh, it's actually not objectionable. It's just boring. It's simple. Yeah. But if you were just like throwing a well whiskey on the rocks and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's $2 well whiskey night. You'd be like, yeah, it. that's fine. Yeah. It is. It's simple. It falls off a cliff pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But what's there, it's that, that caramel, the little trace of oak threaded through it on the nose. You get into the taste and then there's like a, a candy sugary sweetness sprinkled on top. And if this is replacing the other well bourbons that I'm used to getting when I went places and got a well bourbon, this is significantly better mm -hmm. than the generic well bourbons I've been, uh, that have been foisted upon me. Right. Yeah. So you know what happened? Hmm. We're so... Uh, <laughs> yes. Nationalistic. We lowered the bar with Canadian whiskey. 
Yeah, I was like, ah, I can't. So that even this. Canada, you know anything. And then bourbon. Like, oh, it's not bad. I was like, oh, well, America is going to be better than what this. And yeah, what that bullshit on the floor? I don't know. Uh, I, so, I'll give them this. If they were aiming for the best of the well options. Yes. I think they, they pretty squarely hit that. But I would still rather have the cheapest Jim Beam on the shelf than this. Yeah. Yeah, within context, I think they achieved what they said they were setting out to achieve. Which is the whole point. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So... Do we have to store this? The, the vault is yes. short on space. No, it's not. It's Look, short on space, and all that bottles like I've, has to be put somewhere. I've talked to you about this. The weight of a bottle. You can get ceiling anchors, tie some string around, oh, God. and then you just hang things from the ceiling. There's an entire giant... Uh, geez, surface such a pain in the ass just to hang things in here no and then if you need to take it off you don't have to untie it get like little mini carabiners <laughs> clip 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 yeah. and yeah. then you walk in and someone hits one it's just yeah. that would be amazing. like all the way around that would be awesome and then shatter and then uh after the ceiling's full we um put them all on the floor but then there's like a plexiglass, a plexiglass, a plexiglass layer. So with six by six panels, like carpet squares, so you could get to one section yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah. So you're walking over whiskey, like the floor is raised this high, <laughs> plexiglass on top, whiskey on the bottom. We're walking on sunshine. Oh. Well, I don't think we've used a uh, one seventh of all of the space we could use if we needed to just cram a bottle in every conceivable place. Oh, God, that place. is terrible. We are adding more shelves to either side of the door. Yeah. And then the next one was going to be adding shelves behind oh, each sofa. Should you all the way to the ceiling. mention this hard work that uh, Fancy Dan did to help people? Oh, he did the uh, 3D... 360 the, camera. 360, 3D, 3, yeah, 360, 360 camera thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I just need to put it on the website. Yeah, so there's a link by the time people watch this. I'm yeah, yeah, it'll be up. So there's a link in the description. Fancy Dan set up a 360 camera so you can kind of look in any direction and move around the room a little bit. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Oh, if you fight me, you fight for friends. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.